Nitrox certification is one of the most common certifications that divers get after they take their open water course. In that class, we learned that every gas has a max operating depth or MOD, but it can be a bit confusing on how to calculate the max operating depth for your Nitrox blend. Now, yes, if you have a computer that supports Nitrox, it should absolutely tell you what your MOD is for the gas blend that you put into it. But what if you wanted to know the best Nitrox blend for a specific dive site? Or what if you wanted to know the concentration of oxygen in the gas blend at a specific depth so you know if it's safe to breathe or not? These three pieces of information can actually be found very easily using a very simple formula. So don't worry, it is simple even if math wasn't your strongest subject. In this video, I'll teach you how to find your max operating depth of a gas, how to find the partial pressure of that gas, and how to determine the best nitrox mix for the depth that you're going to at your dive site. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and on this channel, you'll find videos on scuba education, equipment, experiences, and environmental awareness. Now, before we get started with everything, let me give a couple important disclaimers. First, this video does not replace a nitrox class or a nitrox certification. You should still go seek an actual nitrox certification course from a certified instructor who is active with a actual recognized agency. So don't let this replace it. It's just a way to tell you a little bit more about the math behind it for educational purposes. And my second disclaimer is that the math really isn't that hard, so don't let that scare you away. Just follow along with me. We'll break it down easily with a couple of examples. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's do another subject in school and give a quick history lesson. John Dalton actually created Dalton's Law in the early 1800s, and with it, he also created what's known as Dalton's Triangle. Now, you might have seen this triangle before, but personally, I find it to be a little confusing without some explanation and some actual practical application to know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with this triangle and these different parts here and what that actually means to me as a diver. At the top, we have PO2, which stands for Partial Pressure of Oxygen, or PPO2. Next, on the bottom left, we have a P, and that stands for Pressure, or the Atmospheric Pressure. Finally, on the bottom right, we have FO2, which is the Fraction of Oxygen, or just another way to say basically the percentage of oxygen represented as a decimal in your gas blend. So if you had 21% air, it would be 0.21. Now, here's the fun part of the triangle. If you have any two pieces of this triangle, you can find the third piece by using the proper multiplication or division sign that shows the divider between those different symbols. Now, that might all make sense in theory, and it's a cool little triangle and stuff, but Thomas, how does it actually apply to me as a diver, right? Well, let me explain. All right, so I moved out to the garage where I have a whiteboard, so we can go ahead and calculate our max operating depth, or MOD. And for this example, let's go ahead and calculate 32% nitrox, which is a pretty common blend that we'll use. Now, as divers, we are told that our partial pressure of oxygen should be no higher than 1.4, and this is to make sure we don't suffer from CNS or oxygen toxicity. Now, Technically, we can use a single formula that allows you to cal calculate your MOD in like one formula, but I think personally that it's a little bit more complicated to do it that way, and I actually prefer to break it into steps. So you're more than welcome to use that formula. I'll show it to you in just a moment here, uh, but I like to actually break it into stages instead. Now, all these calculations actually change a little bit if we are in feet or in meters. Uh, for me, I'm in the US, so I'll be using feet, but I'll show you the formula for both as we start calculating these different things. And this big giant formula is actually going to be our PPO2 divided by our FO2, okay? We're gonna take that answer, we're gonna minus it by one, and we're gonna take that whole number and we're gonna times it by 33 for feet, or it would be by 10 if you're using meters instead. Now, technically, if you're in freshwater, you wanna change the 33 for feet to 34 instead. And then, as far as I know, you can still use the 10 for meters uh, because that, that one little fractional difference isn't that big of a deal there. Uh, honestly, to be conservative, I always use the salt water number. So I always use 10 and 33. Uh, it just means that you're a little bit more conservative with your max operating depth. It won't really mean too much in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you're like me, when you first look at this formula, it kind of makes you go cross-eyed, right? Like it's pretty crazy and I think it hurts your brain a bit. So again, I like to break this down step-by-step step instead so we can actually say exactly what's happening each step of the way. We know how to follow 
order of operations and to do this first and then this and then this big piece, but it's just confusing that way. First, we wanna stay at 1.4 PPO2 because we are safe conservative divers and we know our FO2 or our fractional oxygen percentage is gonna be 32%, which is 0.32 when written as a decimal, right? So we can use Dalton's triangle here to go ahead and figure out the pressure with using 1.4 divided by 0.32, right? So 1.4 at the top, we divide that by 0.32, Hopefully that's big enough for you. And I won't make you do the math here, but that equals 4.375 atmospheres. So let me write that here, 4.375, and that is our P, right? So we took our PO2 divided by our FO2, we got our pressure, 4.375 atmospheres. So the next step, now that we know our pressure there, is we need to subtract one from that number. Now, subtracting one is because we need to basically take away the weight of the atmosphere itself. We just want the weight or the atmospheric pressure of the water instead here. So for Leitman's terms, that's what we're gonna do. So we'll take 4.375 minus one, and I'm sure you can all do this math, but it is 3.375. Now this whole minus one part and then the multiplication piece is just so we can actually get to an actual depth instead of just atmospheric pressure. So we know that as we descend, there's different amounts of pressure. Every 10 meters or every 33 feet, there's one more atmosphere, right? So at 10 meters, it's two atmospheres. At 33 feet, it's two atmospheres, right? At 20 meters, we're gonna be at three atmospheres or at 66 feet, we'd be at three atmospheres. So what we're doing is we're basically normalizing the atmospheric pressure that we got by taking one away that's that whole like extra one that we have on the, on the meters, for example, and we're getting our number here. And now we need to multiply it by our depths. So either 33 feet or 10 meters, and that's like per atmosphere, right? So we take 3.375 and we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by 33 or by 10, right? If we want meters or feet. So 33 feet or 10 meters, right? And that's gonna give us our max operating depth. So again, I'll save you from the math. You can use a calculator for this if you'd like, but it's gonna be 111.375 feet. Or if we're doing meters instead, it's 33.75 meters. A lot easier to do the math in our heads for that one. 111 feet and 33.8 meters, we would just do a rounding instead. And that would be our max operating depth or MOD. So we can write that over here, MOD. Right, and that's our final answer. So as you can see, it's actually not too difficult to calculate this. And this giant formula, I just took each step of the operation and broke each order of operations into its own stage for us so we understand what's actually happening. Now, I think calculating your MOD is cool and all, right? And, and it's kind of cool on its own, but again, we can definitely like type it into Google and get a reference, or uh, we can just enter the gas into our dive computer, for example, and we'll get our MOD. But what if we wanted to see what the partial pressure was of oxygen at a certain depth? So we have 32% or 36% or whatever that is, and we know we're gonna be going to 80 feet, let's say, or you know, a different depth in meters. What if we wanted to know what that partial pressure is gonna be at that depth, just to make sure we're safe and we're getting enough oxygen or we're not getting too much oxygen and we're above 1.4, right? Or you know, better yet, what's the best mixture for a depth that I'm planning to go to? Well, first, if you're finding this video valuable, feel free to share it with one of your friends so they can learn how they can calculate not just their MOD, but the best mix that they have, as well as finding their partial pressure as well. Personally, these are the types of videos that I always recommend people bookmark or save into a playlist later for like a refresher because it's nice to refresh yourself on how these calculations work and how other skills like this work in general. All right, so let's go to move on to the next calculation. How do we calculate our partial pressure of oxygen at a certain depth? So basically if there's too little or too much oxygen in the blend for the depth that we're planning on going to and that we're planning to breathe it at, right? Well, the good news is that we can use Dalton's triangle again to help us here. And in this case, we have the uh, fractional oxygen, right? So the FO2 or the percentage of the gas blend that we're gonna be breathing. And we know what depth we're gonna be going to as well, which is the pressure here. Basically, we have to convert depth to find the pressure at that depth, but we can figure that out. And then as soon as we know those two, we multiply them together and that gives us our PPO2. So we can find out what the partial pressure is at that depth with the gas blend we're gonna be breathing off of. So let's go ahead and write that out, right? So we're gonna take our FO2 and I'm gonna multiply that by our pressure, right? 
So the pressure in atmospheres or at bar, it doesn't matter in this case, uh, the pressure that we're gonna have at the depth that we're planning to breathe it at, right? So to find the atmospheric pressure, we do need to take our depth and we need to convert it over to that. Now, to go ahead and convert our depth, we need to actually divide it by 33 if it's in feet, or we need to divide by 10 if it's in meters. And then we take that answer and we add one to it to get back to the atmospheres again. So this is basically the opposite of the max operating depth calculation if you followed along with that. For this example, let's say we're gonna be using 36% nitrox and we're gonna go to, so 98 feet or 30 meters, whatever you wanna say. We'll do the math for both of them here, right? So to find our atmospheres, we're gonna take 98 feet. We're gonna go ahead and, and divide that by 33 to normalize everything and add one, right? And if you do that math in a calculator, that's gonna equal 3.96. I'm gonna go ahead and just round that to four, and that'll make sense in just a moment when I do the meters. It just makes it a little bit easier for us here. You can use 3.96 and get exact, but we can round to four in this case. So if we do this with meters instead, again, the metric system beats us here in America, but we're gonna take our 30 meters, okay? We're gonna divide that by 10 and then we'll add one to it. And this is really easy mental math here, but 30 divided by 10 is three plus one is four. Okay, so now we know we have four atmospheres, four bar is our P value. So now we have our FO2, it's 36% or 0.36. We have our P value as well, that's gonna be four. So we just need to take 0.36 times it by four and we'll get our PPO2. So that'll equal PO2 on the triangle, which is our PPO2, right? So if we do that right now, we take 0.36, we times it by four, we will get our PPO2 of 1.44, right? 1.44, interesting. So yes, technically, if I did slightly less than this 3.96, you'd get a slightly different answer, but for this, all intents and purposes, we'll go ahead and use uh, four and round it there instead. And technically, we are not allowed to breathe this gas, right? So if we have a PPO2 at 1.44, that's above our 1.4 limit as recreational divers. And that means 36% at 30 meters or 36% at 98 feet, whatever you wanna say, is out of range for us. We're not able to use that gas at that depth. Now, taking a look at that, it's 1.44, right? It's just barely above 1.4. So how would we find the best percentage possible for our dive then, right? How do we calculate what the best mix is instead? And just like that, for the power of editing, the magic board has just erased. So we are reset and ready to go for the next formula. So it's important to say first, before we get started on this, that when picking a nitrox blend, you should factor more than just your max planned depth. But for this video, we're gonna focus on just what the best mix is for the depth instead. And we'll worry about all the other factors that go into picking your actual nitrox blend for a separate video. Now, when I use the term best mix, what we usually mean here is that getting the highest percentage of oxygen you can in your nitrox that you're certified for, of course, as well, uh, without exceeding that 1.4 PPO2 limit, which is our limit as recreational divers. Now, it's important to note that you don't have to use 1.4 for this. Like there might be reasons why you need something other than 1.4, whether it's lower or higher potentially as well, but that does fall into more of a technical diving scenario usually, not so much in recreational diving. The good news is these formulas that I'm showing here, because it's a PO2 value, it doesn't have to be 1.4. You can plug any number into that. I'm just gonna be using 1.4 for this video for consistency sake and because this is more targeted towards recreational divers. But again, if this needed to be a different number, you would just use something other than 1.4 in the different formulas here. Now, with that said, let's go back to our Dalton's triangle like I just showed so we can figure out what the formula actually is that we need so we can figure out what the best mix is gonna be. Now, what parts of this do we have, right? Well, we know we're trying to find our fractional oxygen percentage. So we're trying to find what our best mix is. So what we do have is our PPO2. We don't want to exceed 1.4. And then we also can find what our atmospheric pressure is going to be because we know what depth we're trying to get to. What's the best mix at this depth, right? Or at that dive site, I'm going to a shipwreck, it's on 100 feet, what's the best mix? Or I'm going to a shipwreck, it's at 80 feet, what's the best mix, right? So we can figure out these two pieces, which gives us then our fractional oxygen percentage, which is our nitrox percentage, right? The O2 percentage in our nitrox blend. So this gives us the formula here, PO2. We divide that by P, and that's gonna equal our FO2, which again is gonna be the percentage of oxygen in the mix, which is our you know best mix, we'll say. 
and that writing's a little small, but I swear it says best mix, right? In quotes, best. Because again, your mileage may vary on what you actually need here. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and figure this out here. So for us, again, we know that PPO2 is gonna be 1.4, so that's not the hard part here, but we do have to pick a depth of some sort. So let's say we're going to 25 meters or uh, 82 feet. That should be equivalent there with the conversion. So how do we convert this from a pressure, or sorry, from a depth back into a pressure again? Well, if you followed along in the last formula, we get to do the exact same thing to convert that into a pressure. So for feet, we're gonna divide by 33 feet and then add one. And for meters, we're gonna divide by 10 and then add one. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we're gonna find P equals 82 feet divided by 33 feet, right? Plus one atmosphere. And that is going to equal a certain value for us. We can also say this in meters. So P equals 25 meters divided by 10 meters. Add one to it. And this is again, like I keep saying, where the metric system beats us, where we're going to get 3.5 atmospheres at the end of this, or 3.5 bars. So if you do the math, it'll equal 3.5 in either case, possibly with a tad bit of rounding on the feet side of things, just because that's the way we are in the imperial world of using feet instead of using meters or something like that. Now, if we're shooting for that 1.4 PPO2, like we said, we can take 1.4, plug it into our formula, divide that by our pressure value, which is 3.5, and that will actually equal 0 0.40, which equals 40%, 40% nitrox. Now, 40% nitrox is obviously the limit for recreational diving, as is 1.4 PPO2, but you know, again, it really is that simple. So 40% doing a very simple formula here, all with Dalton's triangle. So to make it easy for you to screenshot this, I went ahead and wrote all the formulas here. So PPO2, pressure, best mix, uh, pressure from depth, and then how to get your mod as well, both in feet and meters. And I wrote feet and meters for the pressure conversion as well there. Uh, but I made this super easy for you with an online calculator. So again, uh, max operating depth and even these other things here, it can be a little bit confusing. So I wrote a calculator for you at my website. If you go to circlehscuba.com, at the top you'll see a menu option for resources. And in that dropdown, there's gonna be one for nitrox calculators. So circulatescuba.com slash nitrox dash calculators, I believe is the website. And you'll be able to actually get access to calculate any of this stuff on your own using that free online calculator. Now, whether you're calculating your max operating depth, what the partial pressure is at depth, or even what the best mix is to take with you on a dive to a certain depth, it is absolutely critical that we analyze the tank that we're actually gonna be breathing from so we know what the oxygen level is. All the theory in the world is great, but theory isn't going to save your life if you're breathing 36% when you thought you were breathing 32% and you wind up going past that MOD and you're breathing a higher partial pressure of oxygen than what you intended and you might get CNS or oxygen toxicity. So if you haven't learned how to analyze a tank yet, don't worry, in this video, I go over how you can easily and quickly analyze your cylinders so you know exactly what you're breathing at depth. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.